sponsors of Dave's Tackle Box. Hello, good evening. Welcome everybody to Dave's Tackle Box. It is Sunday, the 21st of April 2013, and once again, and I know I say this a lot, but it has been one hell of a week. Uh, before we get this show on the road, though, I just want to send my best wishes, as I know everybody watching this will too, to uh, Tim Bonyface, who uh, is usually my guest on the show. He won't be with us tonight because he's looking after his poorly wife. Uh, Tim, we're all thinking of you, wishing you well and hoping for the best and everything goes well for you. So uh, do what matters. Um, with that said, we've, we've, we, we've got a, a reasonably good replacement guest tonight. Uh, later on, I will be joined by the man that is Andy Sutton. Uh, a TV, TV's Andy Sutton, that's what I'm going to start calling him. We'll be joined by TV's Andy Sutton, and we're going to be talking a little bit about the Smoke Without Fire campaign, because if you were watching Andy's show last night, you'll have seen the launch of the Kickstarter funding campaign for the Smoke Without Fire documentary. Uh, I've got some new footage, a uh, little trail that Andy's only edited up today which will be making its debut airing tonight, but you will be seeing just a short trailer. Um, we're going to have a look at what he's managed to put together so far, and then hopefully we're going to talk about what we can do with a bit of funding as well. So uh, looking forward to that. Also, obviously, the reason that everything's been hectic is because of my new job. So I'll be banging on about that a little bit. Not the job, because that's boring. And it bores me, you know, uh, and I was there. Um, but we're going to have a, there's some stuff from Switzerland, put it that way. And it's not a cuckoo clock. Um, I'll be taking a look at this thing and I'm going to be doing this live because this is Seat of Your Pants TV uh, this is the EVOD uh, which I got from safersigs.co.uk and uh, I think it might solve a little problem for me by the time we look at this it all will be clear and if there's time after that and I mean it, if there's time after that we're also going to be looking at my latest Siam Mods acquisition uh, something that's not exactly new it's been around a month or so uh, but it's new to me and I'm quite taken with that too but as is the way before we do anything else we're going to roll the titles So, for those who weren't watching last week or maybe uh, missed what's gone on in my life uh, over the last week, I um, I got a new job, uh, which is a good thing because, you know, I need a job. Jobs are good. Um, but the problem was I only found out about it on Friday last week um, and I had to fly out to start this new job first thing Monday morning because uh, the job was in Switzerland. And... Let's just say it was a little bit chaotic. <laughs> it was a little bit expensive. It, it really sort of threw me. But we managed somehow to get a show out last week. Uh, supported heavily by uh, my guests Jez and Tim. Um, but since that moment, I've hardly spent any time in this room. Because I flew back on Friday night. Uh, threw together a little bit of VT that I'd taken during the week. Which I'll show, show you very shortly. 
Uh, I then um, sat had to spend yesterday sort of catching up with life and, uh, you know, going shopping, getting a haircut. I mean, I'm going to show you some video in a minute and there's some footage of me on Friday and I look like a completely different animal. <laughs> um, but I figured what I'll do is, as I get the chance, is uh, just film little snippets uh, from Switzerland. Uh, it does sort of ease the pressure in at the weekend in trying to get like an hour's show together. Um, and hopefully there might be some good bits in it. Uh, you know, that would be a bonus. Um, but I, I tell you what, let, let's play it straight away. Uh, this is a kind of just a couple of little sort of bits from my uh, first week in my new job in Switzerland. Roll VT. Well, as you can see, the uh, view from the hotel window is uh, its not too shabby at all. It's a shame I can't afford to stay here every night and I'll be moving into a much cheaper place uh, probably tomorrow actually having just seen the price of this place um, but I'm here I've made it I'm in Switzerland I've completed a day's work well a day's sitting around because I haven't got a computer or anything yet it's time to uh, put the ellipse with the 45 milligram juice away and find something that tastes a little bit nicer and have a proper vape before I start thinking about what I'm going to do for me dinner. So uh, that's next. That really is quite a spectacular view, isn't it? Uh, I wouldn't mind waking up to that every morning, to be honest, but it's not to be. Uh, I've got uh, an MVP here uh, with a dual coil cartomizer on it, a big one, full of DY4. That's quite nice actually. Yeah, I've missed that. <laughs> right, food. This is only about 10 minutes after I just spoke to you. The dual coil cartomizer I was using, which was a new one. I opened it yesterday and topped it up. And I'll be honest, I was a little bit suspicious of it then because it didn't seem to hold a lot of juice. It just all flooded out the bottom, which happens from time to time with these. You get a dud like that. And, uh, to be honest, uh, I couldn't get a balance between it flooding and burning, even though it's been soaked in juice for over 24 hours now. Um, it's dry, and if I add juice, it floods through the bottom. And if I put it on anything more than about 3.3 3 .3 volts on the MVP, uh, which isn't enough to taste or feel it, if I up it to sort of 4.2 volts or something like that, it's just burning. So this is a dud cartomizer. Um, but in the stuff that I scrambled together, I had this little case thing, which I got full of like little Ego style batteries and stuff um, <laughs> as a raffle prize in Gary Dibley's Children in Need raffle. There was this thing which looks like a mini Nova tank of sorts. Uh, so I've just topped that up and shoved it on the MVP. And as you can see, this is working just fine. So, um, flavour's a bit sort of muted. But it's good enough. It'll see me through for a couple of days. So, um, I'll update you when there's something to see. <laughs> So it's Wednesday night now and this is my second night in the new hotel and I think I'm going to stay in this one. As you can see it's nowhere near as lavish as the one I had before. 
it has a view overlooking the road and every now and then a tram goes past about 10 feet from my window but uh <laughs> so yeah uh, but it's costing less than half of the other place so I can put up with quite a lot it goes quiet at night as well vaping wise uh, I'm still persisting with this thing I'm using the ellipse during the day with the strong juice in it because I'm being very stealthy in the new office um, but uh, when I've been walking about in the evening and I've had this uh, in my bag I've, I've had uh, the uh, this mini Nova thing on an ego battery and it's been getting me through now I'm back in the hotel I'll put it on the big B so I can up the voltage a bit and it is a much nicer vape at sort of 4.2 volts I think I've got it on at the moment 4.2 volts and uh, it's a much nicer vape than on the ego battery without a doubt so that kind of got me thinking actually and uh, maybe I need to buck up and modernize my ideas a bit so I remembered uh, Dave Dawn and Katz talking about this EVOD thing so yesterday I went on to SaferSync's website and ordered an EVOD starter kit uh, which with the tracking thing that Daz uses now I know has arrived at home today because the missus has told me so when I get home on Friday I'm going to uh, have a look at that and maybe that's what I'll bring with me next week so uh, something that performs a little bit better because this thing just like mutes the flavour a bit really but it works getting through um, I'm managing um, the weather here is ridiculously hot for the time of year apparently and of course I brought winter clothes and uh, so I'm just walking around sweating <laughs> that's a general rule um, it takes me about 15 minutes to walk between the hotel and the office and in this heat lugging a laptop bag and everything it's um, it's an effort so I've just got back from the office now I'm gonna kick back chill out for a bit and there's a curry house right opposite so that's where I'm going for me dinner so uh, I'll try and do another update before I set off for home in a couple of days time cheers right so here I am back in Blighty um, I've got, I'm deaf in one ear. <laughs> it's, it's really funny trying to film this. Um, I have a problem when I've got a cold, planes, they cause pain and make me go deaf in one ear for sometimes a couple of days at a time. So hopefully it'll be fixed before I get back on the plane on Monday morning, but we'll see. So, so it's Friday night basically. So when I last recorded something, I think it was Wednesday night and um, the weather was lovely and it all went wrong. And after that, basically it's rained constantly since I, until I left Switzerland a few hours ago. So I'm really happy to be home. But I basically got through this week then, because I've had to be pretty sort of stealthy everywhere I've been this week, you know. Um, so I've been using this thing, the, the Ellipse, the Avali Ellipse with some 45 milligram RY4 juice. And that's quite good, because that just gives you a little fix. And um, you know, in short, short, a short lot sort of blast on this, and it works really well. It's a bit like that Enjoy thing I was looking at in the show the other week. It just gives you a, a hit of nicotine. Functional. Um, and then this Vivi Nova thing, if that, if indeed that's what it is. Um, so, and this thing, it got no flavour to it whatsoever. It, I, I remember why I don't use these Vivi Nova things now. This is a mini one, and but the big ones I found the same. There's just no flavour to them at all. But it basically has functioned. So I've been using this in the office and on the plane because I actually use this on the train in Switzerland um, and then this in the evenings and stuff when I've been in the hotel or out and about in the evenings so that's good but I have to say I got back and uh, this is my EVIC and I bought a Cyan Mods steel tube and top and everything for it and uh, I couldn't wait I came back through the door and I topped this up and I was going to film it but then I thought no I can't even be bothered to set the camera up <laughs> so I've had several drags on this already wow. 
Mä en voi missä. I, t I tell you what, when you're forced to use these sort of things for a little while um, and then you come back to your Genesis atomizers, it really makes you appreciate them, I tell you. <laughs> Oh, that's good. Mm, mm, DY4. Anyway, so as I mentioned uh, the other night when I was filming, I've ordered uh, an EVOD starter kit. This one's got a blue one on it, but it's got a sticker that says steel. And it's all shrink wrapped and everything, so I haven't opened it up. Um, we'll probably take a look at that on the show on uh, Sunday, so tonight, as far as you're concerned. Uh, but in a couple of days, as far as I'm concerned, I'll probably crack it open tomorrow and set it up because uh, the first thing I'm going to do is go and get a decent cup of coffee because that's the first thing I noticed about Switzerland for a country that's got so many Italians in it you cannot get a decent cup of coffee so I'm going to go and put that right bye where's that Evie? Right, so there you go. That's uh, just a little update on my first week in Switzerland, and I will. I'll try and get out with the camera. Obviously, with it being my first week, you know, uh, I've spent like time trying to find hotels and get settled in and what have you. Um, uh, now I was I, I was actually prepared for some questions from chats. You know, I thought people would want to understand, you know, where I was and and what have you. And I, the first thing I want to do is confirm that Zurich is in Switzerland. This is true. And I fly into Zurich, but then I get a train. So I'm actually kind of in the centre of the country in a place called Solothurn. Um, and it has uh, a beautiful old Baroque, old town centre. So there's like the outskirts are quite modern and what have you. But the, the, um, the you might have seen there in the opening sort of sequence there, there was a picture of a cathedral. And the whole old town is themed around that. It's famous for the number of fountains it's got and all the rest of it. It's gorgeous. But this is Vapor Trails TV, not some travel program. And so I'm gonna, I've, I've been making notes as that was playing, uh, at some of the questions that were coming up in chat. And I, I, I'm gonna deal with the questions that matter. <laughs> right, so first of all, Gillis, it was a tram outside the window, not a tramp, okay? A tram, you know, big thing, electric powered. Like a train, but like, crashes into cyclists yeah uh secondly tracy collins asked about the price of beer it's ridiculous it's absolutely extortionate uh, i went into mcdonald's one night which you know you do sometimes when you're living away from home because it's quick and it's easy and it's cheap except it wasn't cheap right i ordered right i ordered a big mac meal and some chicken nuggets and it cost me 14 quid That is just fundamentally wrong. The place is so expensive. I thought Munich was expensive. Munich is expensive, but it's cheap compared to Switzerland. Egomaniac, you don't get cuckoo clocks from Switzerland. They come from the Black Forest. That's technically Germany. I know this because I made some quip about cuckoo clocks while I was working in Munich last year. And indeed, we bought a cuckoo clock. It's downstairs. And... Uh, with this microphone at exactly half past the hour you may hear it cuckoo uh, but they they technically they come from the black forest which is south germany it's in bavaria not switzerland i bet, I bet people are really glad they tuned in tonight because this is an education isn't it and finally to mr andy smoke to vape tv's andy sutton aka smoke to vape it wasn't a green screen that was really the view that was really the view from the window but it was just for one night because I couldn't afford it for two nights. Not at those prices. But there was also uh, a bit of discussion there. And I just, I just want to very quickly mention this. I've, I've just written on my pad here, 45 milligram. Guaranteed to get a debate going whenever you mention it. Of course, that's not why I mention it so often. There's uh, quite a few comments in there. People saying it's too strong. I'd fall over if, if, I, uh, if I use that. Um, that's what I thought until I tried it. Um, if you used 45 milligram juice 
the way you use 24 milligram juice you probably would feel quite ill it's very very strong but the fact is your body doesn't let you it forces you to put your e-cig down that's the difference so really don't rule it out don't rule it out you know um if the eu get their evil way there'll be a lot of 45 gram uh milligram uh, nicotine liquid issued and recommended by doctors that's a fact because it's like using a fag just thought i'd mention that so uh but try it you know just have a couple of drags on something you know and uh you know if you're at a vape meet sometime and i'm there ask and i'll let you try a little bit don't use it all day i couldn't use it all day because i wouldn't be able to enjoy vaping but trust me it's not what you expected 36 milligram gives me a headache because it's not strong enough to make me put the e-cig down when i've had enough 45 is so there anyway we need to move along uh, and uh we're going to be joined very shortly by andy sutton um but to take us up to that uh we're just going to take a short break so i'll see you that's about a minute and a half something like that so be right back of Dave's Tackle Box. And welcome back. So, right, like I say, very shortly, he's, 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 you might actually, just in the corner of that, you might just see, if Andy waves his arms, you may see him on that laptop screen. Um, but before we uh, let him out of his box, uh, I just want to run a little bit of ET. Anybody that uh, missed Andy's show last night will may not be aware of the fact that the Smoke Without Fire campaign, this is the campaign that Andy is heading up, uh, to create a vaping documentary to send our message to the EU and, and to just publicise what we do and dispel some myths. It really took its uh, its first proper steps last night with the launch of the Kickstarter campaign to fund it. Um, and he's mixed together uh, another little uh, ad, a sort of trailer, which you'll probably see quite a lot on VTTV in the coming weeks. Uh, let's look at that now. It's It's making its debut. This is cool. And we're back in the room. Okay, right, so uh, now, oh, okay, I'm going to have to come clean because I'm going to have to go over there and move a camera because <laughs> it caught me right out. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to throw the floor over to Andy 
and then delicately tiptoe around this microphone <laughs> so you don't hear me crashing tables and stuff out of the way while I adjust that camera. Uh, Andy, I'm going to throw it over to you. You launched the campaign last night on your show. Yes, I did. Let's tell the guys exactly what it is that you've launched and keep talking till I come back. <laughs> okay, no pressure. No pressure. I think I can do it, though. Um, basically, last night we launched uh, the crowdfunding website on Kickstarter. It was quite an arduous um, application process because they're very specific about the people who are allowed to feature their projects. And they had to be creative projects, so the emphasis was on that. And we had to ensure that we were not just a, a cause they, they don't allow causes to go on there. So that is why I've put it in the way that I have, in that we say that we are looking to expel myths, we're looking to tell people stories, we're looking to get our point across, which is fair enough. You know, you see lots of politically based documentaries, which are, uh, they have got an agenda, and we've got an agenda. So that's fair enough. And we're allowed to voice that, vent, that, 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 that you know, that opinion. Um, but we have to counterpoint it with other people's opinions, but then we can counterpoint those opinions with, um, some would say, the correct opinion. <laughs> right, OK, on with it, so, on with it. So um, the crowdfunding website allows us to um, take uh, pledges. They're not donations, they're pledges because the money that is going into the pot um, it will be going towards elements of the documentary that we alone cannot fund so with the help of the people that have pledged already we will be able to secure professional services which are out of our reach at the moment which includes and i've talked about before professional translation services if someone if there's an expert in um, a, a foreign country maybe we can get a, a camera person and a director over there to shoot it for us and and we will have those in crystal clear vision and they will be answering our questions. OK, that, that makes sense to me. Now, I'm just going to try a bit of an experimental change of camera shot here uh, mm. because I've moved this camera, but I've no idea what it's pointing at. <laughs> <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? It's all right, you can fix it in the edit. Oh, well, I, if I lean over to my left quite a lot, it'll work. For a little while there. Okay. Ask me another question. You can move it again. <laughs> well, I was going to play the VT. Is oh, what okay. I was going Good to idea. Do. Okay. Because like, yeah. Okay. I, I I watched this VT last night. Um, actually, I did get a sneak preview of it before it went out on your show last night. And yes. um, and and this is basically uh, what you have edited together from the video responses to the Tell Us Your Story idea. Okay. That is correct, yes. So what you did there was you put up a, 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 a YouTube video and said, film your vaping story and apply it as a video response. So basically you scraped the footage off of YouTube. Yes. Uh, which came in all kinds of different shapes, sizes, qualities and all the rest of it. It did. And you came up with uh, the Smoke Without Fire, your story, part one. Part one is important. Let's roll that VT. Hello, my name's Andrew. Hi, I'm Alex in Atlanta, Georgia. Hi, Lee here. Hi, my name's Vincent. I prefer to be called Vinny, actually. Hi there, my name's Matt. I am a vapor. Hiya, Chris again. My name's Paul, and I'm a vapor. Hi, my name's Andy, and I use electronic cigarettes. Hi, my name's Lorian. I've been vaping for two years now. I'm here to tell you my story. Hi, my name's Paul. I'm 32 years old. And basically, I just wanted to tell you my story about finding e-cigs. How did I start vaping? I started vaping just over a year ago now. Christmas 2008, I had the seventh of a string of heart attacks. The seventh nearly killed me. I no longer live in England. I left there when I was 19. but. I think it's important for people everywhere to add their voice to this debate. In 2011, I bought an electronic cigarette. 
and haven't looked back since. That was the 20th of November last year and the day they arrived I set it all up and I went out in the garden and I had a couple of drags and it worked just fine. I, I didn't have crazy cravings, I didn't have psychotic episodes. The second that I came in from the garden I gathered up all of my smoking stuff and I threw it in the bin. Initially it was a novelty to me, it was more out of curiosity. Uh, I had no intention of quitting smoking whatsoever. I just, I wanted to give an e-cig a try, see what all the fuss was about. 18 months ago, I gave up smoking tobacco products for electronic cigarettes. It turns out I liked it a lot. I uh, stopped smoking almost immediately. Not intentionally, it was just a happy accident, a byproduct of using an electronic cigarette. I discovered them Christmas 2009, because I didn't want to smoke around my kids and I didn't want to smoke around my mum. And over a few weeks, I discovered, surprisingly, that I preferred vaping to smoking a real cigarette. I never used tobacco flavours. I, I avoided those intentionally. I recently moved to flavours because suddenly tobacco flavours just don't do it for me at all. I'm currently using 36 milligram liquids, um, peppermint. I don't worry about secondary smoke or anything like that. and. Uh... It's, it's something I enjoy. It's all because of these wonderful devices and you know and I'm really enjoying it. I use some other nice flavors white chocolate raspberry is an example and I'm 43 years old I deserve a treat every now and then so why not? And I'm also pleased to know that my, my sister's um, she's also recently made the switch to electronic cigarettes but now the EU want to take this away. The EU ban, the EU ban is scare me because I know that I would end up in cigarettes again. They want to take away my right to choose to consume nicotine in a cleaner way. But they're trying to restrict the strength down to a ridiculous level of four milligram. Bearing in mind there are vape on 36 milligram. These are fantastic devices and heavy-handed EU regulation is going to mean that it will turn hundreds of thousands of people to back towards tobacco. And it would be a real sad day if the EU made them into medical devices. I personally don't see them he says, as a medicine. They are not medical devices. They are a substitute for me for smoking. I enjoy nicotine. Nicotine itself is not a harmful thing. They need to know that I've found a way that I can continue to get the enjoyment I used to get from smoking with risk that is magnitudes lower. It's the smoke when you burn a cigarette, when you burn tobacco. It's the smoke that kills. I enjoy consuming caffeine in the form of a cup of tea. I drink a lot of tea throughout the day. Is that going to be suddenly turned into a regulated medicine? No, it's not. So would I recommend these? Well, yes, because the science is showing that this is a clean way to enjoy nicotine. And nicotine doesn't kill. We're not it's doing yourself any harm. I'm living proof of that. If, if I hadn't have gone onto this and I'd have started smoking, I'd have been dead now. I get all the pleasures of smoking without all the death. And it's great. And the other day, I blew up 40 balloons without passing out, which was just incredible, and did an hour's dancing with my children. These are cool things to be able to do, and stuff that I couldn't even have dreamt of doing even a year ago, and I'm only 34. My doctor is quite happy with me vaping. Uh, he assures me that my blood pressure is normal without any medication whatsoever. I'm currently on 18 milligrams uh, per milliliter, which is it's stopping me from going back to cigarettes. Um, so I am worried if they decide to reduce that to, to four milligrams, then I'll just end up going back to normal cigarettes. If these weren't available, those millions of people would be smoking now. Smoking cigarettes and killing themselves. If the uh, EU does take them away, then uh, I can guarantee you 100% that I'll be back down the shop buying cigarettes. If the proposed European revisions are passed, I will no longer be able to use my e-cig and will most likely be forced to go back to smoking cigarettes. Patches and gums don't do it. They just don't do it. These things do. If I want to vape, if I want to use 
tasty flavors. In the process, extend my life. That's my choice, and they don't get to tell me that I can't do it. Nicotine is not the bad thing. It's all the other thousands of chemicals that are in cigarettes, and I wish the EU would stand up and listen to what we've got to say, make some sense, and actually do the right thing. MEPs need to understand that the poor decisions they make today will have ramifications tomorrow in the rest of the world. I've also got several other people to, in my local area to change to electronic cigarettes too, and they express similar benefits. Please don't ban them. I ultimately hope common sense prevails here and that e-cigs are removed from the tobacco products directive. Please, for God's sake, don't let the EU do what they want to do with these things. They should be left as consumer devices. All of the flavors should be left alone so that people can use what works for them. They need to be left to save lives. And we're back in the room and I'm still no further, no closer to where I want to be on that camera. I'm kind of off to the right a bit. Um, right, Ask gonna, me another question, Dave. I'm going to ask you another question, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> seamless. Absolutely seamless. Like a pro. Um, yeah, so, right. My, when I saw that for the first time, the first thing I thought was, that. wow, that is amazing. Because I'd watched all of the individual clips. And, uh, you know, to bring it together like that, you know, I mean, OK, we think it's amazing. It's what you do, isn't it? It's your job. The first thought that went through my mind was, you know, OK, if we can do that with footage that was shot on iPhones and webcams and, and all these different formats and uh, and I mean different formats, you know, there, there were different. Uh, some of it was four to three. Some of it was upside down. Some of it was 16 to nine. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and no doubt different frame rates and all the rest of it. You pull all that together. You know, what could you achieve with professionally shot interviews and, you know, and a professional production crew? Well, it's an interesting question because the re result of that video that I put together demonstrates that the power is with the people. It's with us. So what what I will be able to do is 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 fairly straightforward. We are always going to have our opinion and our voice. So the videos from us as electronic cigarette users will still remain key to the message. And with everybody's kind donations of time and doing those videos, you will see those again in, in other incarnations. The difference is when, let's say, somebody says, I disagree completely with the, the the fact that it's going to be medicinalized and they're going to the maximum you will be able to get is four milligrams. If I then put an interview with an MEP who disagrees with us and then punctuate that her point with someone who is saying a scientist or someone who has got medical background, a doctor completely annihilating the previous point that is what it that's the, the power but to get to those people who who have busy work diaries it takes the ability to have someone in london to have someone in edinburgh to be able to travel around the uk and be able to get to these places and people and point a camera at them now it doesn't necessarily the, the quality of the image is purely technical if if this is going to end up on tv our video diaries that we're shooting now are absolutely fine because within a broadcast program, there is a certain allowance for user-generated footage. But certain sections of it have to be broadcast quality shot on certain cameras with certain data bit rates. It all gets very technical. But all the interviews with the people who we actually have to make appointments to go and see will be shot on those cameras. So we can ensure that when somebody says, contact me or, or, or somebody else and says, we need, you know, proof that, you, you know, that e-cigs that e are harmless. 
I can supply uh, what's called an electronic press kit with those chunks of interviews that we have gathered on it that are broadcast quality. And then they can seamlessly put those out onto TV. So what we're doing is we're producing the kit of parts that allows the correct message to get out there into the broadcast media. Now, it may seem like we're taking small baby steps at the moment on Twitter and using hashtags and sending it to celebrities and MEPs. That's all the right stuff to do at the moment. We have to take small steps and apply pressure continually to, to, to get noticed, to get mentioned, and then it will build from there. So it is, a, it is going to be keep, keep going as we're doing, wait for the Kickstarter money to get in, and then we will be able to roll it out. And I will continue to be doing what I can with what I've got. And I hope that the video that I've done is a demonstration of what is possible without any money. So that's it, really. It will only get better and, and more diverse, really. Excellent. That's what we're looking for, I, diversity. I, th I think you summed that up perfectly. Now, and I want to you moved your camera? I've moved the camera. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually in shot. <laughs> oh, that's going to be amusing. That was a win-win then. Yeah. yeah. I did it deliberately, really. You just, mm. you know, had interest. You know? Mm. <laughs> oh, told you it was going to be a bit seat of your pants, this show. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right, okay. So, so I mean, th 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 that's brilliant. I mean, th th that's what we can do with money. Let's talk about how we get the money now. Now, you've launched the, uh, the Kickstarter campaign. Yes. And I'm just going to flick to that now. Because, yes. okay, I loaded this page during the VT and it's gone up again. It's gone up again. Yeah, it's gone it's up again. Gone up um, since you launched it. I, I can look at my end here because I, I can actually log into the website. And I, um, it's just uh, received a pledge of support from a lovely gentleman of £50. And it is currently standing at £2,702. That's yeah, in 24 hours. I keep thinking to myself, well, it's two. De we're two days in, but we're not even. You know, we we are it's now. It's twenty-four hours. You it's launched it in hours. this time in this slot last night, didn't you? Absolutely, absolutely. Now, now the, I, I'm getting quite a few questions um, via the mess via the messaging system on the Kickstarter campaign. And yeah. what I will be doing is, if there are recurring messages of the same sort of theme, I yeah. will be. Um, there's a, an ability to add uh, basically a, a, f a frequently asked question, an FAQ section. Okay. So that, that will fill out as it goes. Also, when I'm at work in Cardiff, don't think this is going to stop. Um, Sue is going to be um, uh, looking after the campaign. If there are any uh, questions that she can't answer themselves, she has got a direct line, being that she is married to me. Um, and uh, phone, I will, yeah. Yeah, the bat phone. And I will pass that on, and then she will post on there because she can log into all the Twitter and all the Facebook and all the the, the Kickstarter. It's it's fully managed all the time, um, and 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 uh, what was my point there as well? That <laughs> one of the recurring questions is um, that when because obviously we don't we don't get the funds until we've reached the ten thousand pounds. That that's important to stress, isn't it? If you that if, if you only to get to nine thousand nine hundred by the twenty sixth of May. Or better off. Well, no, no pressure, Dave. But I notice it actually the the Kickstarter campaign ends during your show. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I blame you at all. <laughs> and uh, on the subject of uh, sorry, uh, you, you 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 people were asking about that. I, I've got a question here, um, which has actually come to me via the backroom boys there uh, mm -hmm. and girls. Um, and it says, "I'll pledge, but I need to know when the target, if when the target is reached, we'll get notified before they take our money, as I move it around between accounts and don't want to go overdrawn." Sure. Okay. Well, um, let me just have a look at the project. Um, and it ends in when does it end? It ends on Sunday, May the twenty sixth at nine thirty. I would say that um, plus four days of that the money could go out so it's it once once we've reached the objective i would allow four days for banks to transfer stuff across and then that is when they will um probably take the money out i will right. ask kickstarter and i will post that that will be my first that will be my first faq question that'll be cool but uh, i suppose the easy answer to the question is it won't be before the 26th of may 
uh, no, by definition no. and and shortly thereafter correct correct another question i'm asked quite regularly which is going to be the second question in my faq um is what happens if we go over the 10 grand yes uh i know the answer to this but you should answer <laughs> well what what it would be absolutely fantastic if we went over the 10 grand. We're, we are concentrating, obviously, to get to that 10 grand. But if we keep going as we are, being that we've got some, something like um, 34 days left to go, and the, the, the response has been amazing, uh, if we were to go over, the project would just grow, basically, and enable us to gather more footage... And if we get to the stage where we can afford to gather enough footage to make the project larger, then the project will get larger. It will not delay or stop us um, releasing media as we go. So I want to, you know, so if we go over the 10 grand, we, we it, there won't be a massive delay. Do you see what I mean? It, that we will still release stuff as we had planned yeah i see what you mean yeah but if we go over and it, it say if we went wildly over that there's there's a little idea floating in my head that if if other documentaries like bowling for Columbine and supersize me have a global audience perhaps this could as well but I don't want to get. I don't want to. I don't want to get yeah. too excited about no, that. No, I yet. understand that. Yeah. I, I want to focus on the campaign at hand, which is producing the media, which, which we all need. Indeed, and if we can then develop that idea, because there's more funding available in the future, the resources then, are there. Then exactly. That's what we'll do. Exactly. Exactly. I've got another question for you coming there via uh, sure. Dave Dawn, who's doing a very good impression of Sav. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> It's uh, the wig. Question uh, from... Uh, I can't read it because it's too far away, but I can read the question. It says, can we pledge more than once? I'm tempted to say you can. In you, you might as well just go and increase your original pledge, can't you? Cause well, exactly. One, you have a login to the Kickstarter site. Um, you could pledge more than once if you had two logins, but then that would suggest that you are pledging for two people. Um, I have seen just over the last 24 hours someone pledge a tenner and then come back and pledge 50. Yeah. Um, I've had some people that come in and pledge a pound and then come in and pledge a fiver. Yeah. You know, every little counts. And yes, you can you can change your your pledges. On my side of things, we've obviously got the perks. Um, amazing uptake on that and i've got graphs and things which show me which ones are the most popular and i think the most popular one is around the 25 pounds mark which is absolutely amazing yeah i can add new perks and i will be adding new perks also i need to add as well i can't really add specific vaping related perks that's you know because obviously this is a global market a global audience um i might be sending um a beautiful cyan mod to someone who has no use for it so um Yes, good yes point, there are good things point. in the in the workings that are enabling us to raise finance through Kickstarter for vapors, but um, we're, that's in development. <laughs> There's another question: <laughs> Is Andy thinking of doing tasks or dares, etc., as a fundraiser? Sure that Rat and a few others would pledge for a topless SOS show. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, yeah, time will tell. Time will tell. So I'm, I'm hearing yes for enough money. <laughs> yeah, not, not right now. <laughs> not right now, no. No, oh, not on my show. God, no, not on my show. A, drunk and be prepared mentally. <laughs> drunk, and so drunk, would the audience. It would be quite interesting to see the audience figure plummet as... Um, <laughs> Oh, but no, it's dear. an interesting question. I, you know, seriously, um, the, the the important thing is also is to keep the uh, SWAF campaign videos coming into me. You know, your story. If you haven't yeah. told your story, it's not too late. They, well, uh, I'm going to film a, one. I'm going to film one during the week. 
Um, Brilliant. It's a good use of okay. my time. And okay. I'll yep. also get a couple of minutes footage out of it for my show as well. So. No, brilliant. And if you, if you look very closely, <laughs> if you look very closely, Dave, at that, on, on that trailer that you kindly played out at the yeah. top of the show, um, you are in one of the little windows. Am I? So it's sort of tease. Oh, right. Okay. In your red jacket sitting on a log, puffing out a, 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 a dragon-shaped plume of vapour. I do that. I do that a lot, yeah. actually. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I forget yeah. there's a camera. <laughs> right, Andy, I've got to... Unfortunately, I could talk about... This is a show in its own right. I know. There's so much to the detail. Because I'm dying to see the process starting to happen, uh, you know, as a sort of amateur sort of video maker and editor. You know, to see the process going through and all that kind of stuff. Sure, sure, sure. Come up with. All, all, I mean, all, let me add as well, just quickly, that I, uh, that I will be endeavouring to cover the, the behind-the-scenes stuff. There are perks that feature video messages from the crew so if if i send out a crew to film an mep they will do you a little shout out while they're filming the interview How and cool stuff like that, that. so cool so that? um there is a process going on behind the scenes as well to keep everybody involved with the process that we're doing so you can see where your money's going brilliant andy i've got to cut you short one, what? One thing, one thing. I just want to say, I just want to say a massive, massive thank you for everybody who's pledging or thinking of pledging. Um, I had a very emotional night last night after the show. It really, really affected me. <laughs> good stuff, good stuff. And, and well, okay. Let me, on behalf of everybody else, say thank you for getting this rolling and, and getting this organised because it's great stuff. It's not just me; it's everybody. You're so modest. What is it? Jess called you his favourite bearded Bristolian. <laughs> I've got to cut you off because I've got I've got a show to do, man. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, brilliant. Uh, keep us posted. I'll be watching. Uh, I'll be watching that Kickstarter thing. I'm finding the whole thing very exciting. Um, right now, I'm going to take us to uh, another break, a short break, and then when I get back, we're going to have an extremely quick look at the Evod. Andy, thanks very much. No problem, thank you. See you again soon. Cheers, mate. Bye. And welcome back, and a huge thank you to Andy there. Um, the work he's put into this um, is just incredible, frankly, the amount of work he's put into this. Uh, and it's great to see the idea that he's been talking about for some time now actually starting to materialise. Uh, it's just going to be great, you just know it is. Um, let's get the pledges in. Don't want to sound too much like children in need here, but like you know, you know the you know the website, you know the number. <laughs> um, Ten thousand quid. I reckon we're going to do it. I reckon we're going to beat it. And if we do, we'll get value for money for every penny that goes in. I've no doubt about that. Now, in the little sort of Swiss diary thing I did at the beginning of the show, uh, I was sort of bitching a bit about this this mini Nova tank thing. Um, so. Like I say, it kind of worked, but the flavour was very muted. So I thought, I'm going to try something else. I hadn't got on with most of the clearer miser designs. They, 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 just, they, they tend to end up irritating me a bit. 
Um, but I, I saw Dave uh, and Keith uh, looking at the EVOD. I heard uh, Kat talking about the EVOD uh, when we were in a Google Hangout one night. And, and the, the feedback I was seeing on the forums and everything saying they're really good. So uh, whilst I was sat there in the hotel the other night thinking I could do something better than this, uh, I ordered uh, an EVOD starter kit from safersigs.co.uk. Uh, it arrived while I was away. And if I go to this camera, uh, you get a little close up there. This was waiting for me when I got back the other night, and I'm sorry, I've had moved tables and stuff around, so this is going to be a little bit sort of iffy. Uh, I've literally got a few minutes to look at this. Uh, the kit comes with two complete e -cigs. So you've got your EVOD cartomizer, if that's what you want to call it, top section. Uh, you get two of those, two batteries. Uh, you get some instructions, uh, you get a charger which looks like a normal Ego charger and then you get these things called coil units. Now I'd heard people say that this thing was good and that's what led me to buy one uh, but I have no idea what made it tick until this all arrived so if I just get that stuff out of the way um, and have a quick look at this. It's basically a bottom coiled cartomizer. The drip tip is fixed, you can't put your own drip tip in as far as I can tell. I haven't forced it yet um, to try and see if I can do anything with that. But basically you get this little coil unit that fits into the base and they just simply unscrew like that. Um, it really is excellent. Um, and I got, I think I got five of these in the bag here, and there's two in the cartomizer. So you get seven of these all together. Uh, I'm told that you can re-wick them, but I'm thinking I'm probably not going to bother, to be honest with you. Because I want these to be something convenient that I can transport around in my top pocket. Uh, and just be a sort of alternative to the 45 milligram stuff that I'm using. So when I'm being re sort of really sneaky <laughs> while I'm travelling about, like on the plane, then I use this little uh, Ovali ellipse, uh, and that's fine. I've got 45 milligram juice in there, and it, and like you know, a couple of drags every half hour, and I'm, it keeps me happy. Um, but what I wanted was something that's fairly maintenance free, so I'm not going to be doing anything like re-wicking. I'm going to buy myself a big bag of these, I think, when they, you know, as, as these run out. Um, and simply to use it, you just screw it in. They've even knurled the little sort of shaft there, so you know, you can get it good and tight. So you're not going to get any leaks just by using the knurled bit. You stick your juice in there, literally, avoiding the middle bit, which is a tip that I saw Dave Dawn giving to uh, Dazzy's mate, whose name he scouts me the other night. You put that in there, and it's ready to go. Now, I was curious to see what resistance uh, the uh, coils were, and I'm not even sure if they're all the same yet. But I know the one on here, I stuck it on the EVIC as soon as it arrived, and it metered at 3.2 ohms, and I thought, good lord. Uh, <laughs> uh, I filled it with juice, um, and... Uh, the first drag I took was uh, was really quite burnt, and I thought, oh, here we go. Um, let me just show you this, though, and then I'll elaborate on that. It's a five-click on and off button. It looks rather smart. This is the silver-coloured one. They do them in different colours. If I get my uh, camera angle changed there, I think it looks great. They, everybody says they just don't leak. Like I say, I got a burnt hit on the first drag, and I was thinking, oh, no. But then I had another drag on it, and I just hadn't let it soak because it was a new coil, and it's been fine ever since. And I've had a couple or three tanks through. I think this is the second refill, so the third tank, and it's nearly empty now. And for uh, three point oh, and uh, Dazzy's friend's uh, Darren's name was uh, friend's name was Graham. <laughs> I've just seen pop up there in chat. Um, the uh, for a three point two ohm coil, I can't believe that how much hit and flavour and vapor you get from this. It's 
really, really good for, for, for what it is. I think uh, the kit cost me 42 quid or something for two complete e-cigs, five spare coils. I'm going to be taking it to Switzerland. You'll be seeing some updates on how I'm getting on with it during the week. Now, that brings me uh, to just about over time, I'm afraid. That, that's Mr. Sutton's fault. But it was interesting what he had to say, so we'll let him off. Um, I just want to say, uh, I hope that the show wasn't too bad tonight, even with cameras pointing the wrong way and the fact that it was literally put together at breakneck speed. Uh, I've enjoyed doing it because they're always more exciting when you've got no script. Um, I hope you enjoyed it too. I'll be back again next week with God knows what. I've ordered some stuff. We'll have a look at that Cyan Mods tube that we didn't get time to uh, to look at tonight. But I've got some stuff arriving during the week that could be quite interesting, actually. Uh, until then, I'd just like to say thanks for watching and good night. And I can't find my credits. So we'll just stay here. <laughs> thanks for watching. Thank mm -hmm. you.